right here, right now, I put the offer out. I don't wanna chase you down. I know you see it. You run with me, and I can cut you free out of the treachery and walls you keep in. So trade that typical for something colorful. And if it's crazy, live a little crazy. You can play it sensible, a king of conventional, or you can risk it all and see. Trapped in. Now I admire you, and that will show you do. You're onto something, really, it's something. But I live among the swells, and we don't pick up peanut shells. I'll have to leave that up to you. I'd be the talk of the town Disgraced and disowned Another one of the clowns Glad you would finally live a little Finally laugh a little Just let me give you the freedom to dream And it'll wake you up And cure your aching Take your walls and start them breaking Now that's a deal That seems worth taking But I guess I'll leave that up to you intriguing but to go would cost me greatly so what percentage of the show would i be taking fair enough you'd want a piece of all the action i'd give you seven we could shake and make it happen i wasn't born this morning 18 would be just fine uh, why not just go ahead and ask for nickels on the dime 15 i do eight to 12 maybe nine Hello, everyone, and welcome. You know, whether you're with us live or watching the recording, you know, welcome to our Team Fearless Goal Setting Masterclass for 2019. And, you know, before we get started, I just want to say congratulations on making the decision to confidently and clearly, you know, set the vision for your life. And I'm so thrilled uh, that I to welcome you on this journey, and I can't wait to hear about all the new milestones you're going to achieve over the next year. Now, this goal setting uh, course is you know, very intense and very thorough, it's, and it's meticulously designed to get you on a path towards your life mission, you know, to give you greater purpose, fulfillment, and achievement, and to achieve it you know, quicker than ever. Um, so what you'll need before we get started, uh, right up front, you're going to need a pencil and, or pen, whichever one you prefer, it doesn't make a difference to me, but we are going to do some writing. And with that, I recommend you have a notebook or some loose leaf paper, but something to take notes on, okay? And, and then your uh, undivided attention as well. Now, you know, as always, having the, you know, the proper intention and attention on this course 
is going to give you the most you know bang for your buck so to speak so here here are the top strategies i have for you you know to maximize your time here so you can get the most out of this and succeed at your highest potential um, number one is to block out your calendar you know complete the course and the and you know all the writing we're going to do you know scheduling the most crucial activity to set ablaze your next 12 months right you know this is the most important thing you can do uh, in, in taking that next step so if it doesn't get scheduled it doesn't get done so make the clear time to complete this entire course um, the next thing is to complete every activity in full and in doing so you know make this week the 70 day period that's gonna you know set the pace for the next you know for the, for the rest of the year you know no one can do this for you and no one can set your goals and you know, if you allow someone to design your life, I guarantee it won't turn out anything like the one you had planned for yourself. So I recommend you invest in yourself by completing every activity here in full. Um, the next thing is to you know find a support community for this um, as you move forward with the goals and uh, things we're going to put in place to help you step by step achieve those goals. Find a support community to assist you in that. Now you know fortunately for all of us with Team Fearless, we have a fantastic uh, community for support. So now I'll go over real quickly, you know, what we're going to do. Uh, part one, we're going to go through uh, some beliefs, you know, why they're so important um, and how they can, you know, program your success and have a vital role in that. Um, part two, we're going to go and audit the past year. We're going to take an audit of 2018. Um, part three, we're going to dream and set big goals for 2019. And then part four, we're going to put some uh, habits in place to help you and create a daily habit action items for you to do each day in 2019 in order to move you along closer to your goals. So uh, we're excited to get started. Uh, let's dive in. So I'm sure you all, many of you have seen this before. You know, if you can believe, you can achieve. You got to, before you can, you know, you got to believe before you can achieve. Uh, before you can achieve, you must believe. And I remember when I first saw this, uh, goodness, it had to have been probably a dozen years ago. Honestly, I thought it was a little cheesy, but that was also before I had done a lot of learning and development. And I realized um, that your beliefs really set the tone for everything in your life, guys. Now, this is a great visual for that. It's the belief cycle. You can follow it. We'll start in the top left corner. Um, but your beliefs, what you hold to be true in your brain, directly determines the amount of potential you can tap into. Okay? Now, the amount of potential you tap into is going to, that's like your big pool of potential, right? So if you have a tiny little pool of potential of limiting beliefs, um, you're not going to have a whole lot of, not to pull from, to take action. And that action is that you take determines the results you get. And those results you get determine belief in yourself, okay? So we're going to come back to this in a minute, but this cycle feeds itself, and we're going to talk about some key points in that. So here's what you got to know about beliefs, guys. You know, your beliefs directly dictate your reality. And we'll revisit that model, uh, that, that visual, the belief cycle in a moment. Now, our own self-limiting beliefs can bring seriously negative uh, results in our lives and any, any venture we get into, okay? But by the same token, we can also up-level our beliefs to plug in more positive ones to affect that cycle and bring about positive results, which is just going to feed into more positive beliefs and the never-ending cycle there. So knowing that, you know, I want you to, you know, take a look, uh, a, a good introspective look at yourselves, um, you know, take a good look. And what are some of the negative beliefs that you have that may have been holding you back in the, in the past? You know, maybe it's, uh, you know, oh, it's not fair. No one likes me. I've got to be perfect or it's not worth doing anything. I got to keep people happy. You know, maybe it's, ah, things will never change, right? Maybe it's I'll never get well. You know, maybe, maybe you've been struggling with your health and, you know, you, you keep telling yourself that, you know, you're never going to get well. You know, things are never going to get better. Maybe one of your goals is to, you know, maybe it's to be completely debt free. Maybe it's just to, you know, take a big chunk out of your debt this year. You know, maybe you've been living under such a pile of debt for so long, whether it be student loans, mortgages, you know, car payments, whatever it may be, personal loans. You know, maybe you've been, 
you know, smothered by that, if you, you know, you just can't see the light and you tell yourself, ah, it's no point, I'll never be out of debt. This is just the way I'm going to live my life. You know, maybe you're in, in business and you're building a team and, you know, you have this belief in your head that, oh, my, my team just won't grow. You know, and regardless of what I do, how hard I try, how many tools I provide for them, no matter what I do, you know, I could bend over backwards, but my team just won't grow. You know, maybe, maybe your limiting factor belief about yourself is that you're too disorganized. I can't possibly be a success. I can't possibly, you know, grow my business. I can't get out of debt. I'm too disorganized. I can't even keep my own home in order. I know that's been a struggle for, for our family in the past. You know, maybe, maybe, just maybe, you believe that you have to control everything. And maybe that belief that you have to control everything is not allowing, you know, other people, other leaders, maybe it's in your team, your life to step up and give you some leverage. Maybe that's something you struggle with. You know, maybe you tell yourself, oh, I've been overweight my whole life. My parents are overweight. You know, everyone in my family is overweight. That's just the way it is, so I'll never lose that weight. Maybe you just live a crazy busy life, you know? Maybe you're saying, ah, oh, I'm too busy. I can never do what those people do. Um, you know, I can, never, I can never go build a business. I can never get debt free. I'm too busy, you know, just, just going to work and, you know, putting food on the table and paying the bills. I'm too busy. Well, the reality is everybody's got the same 24 hours, right? Okay, so now I'm going to give you explicit permission, guys, to tell that negative committee that meets inside your head to sit down and shut up, okay? Because moving forward, we know that this belief cycle is real, and it is extremely powerful and has a direct impact on exactly where you are in life today. So by taking out those negative beliefs and plugging in some positive ones, we can begin to slowly, maybe not overnight, well, we can slowly begin to expand that potential, you know, that pool of uh, pool of beliefs, that pool of potential that you have to pull from. And then over time, pulling from a larger pool, more positive pool is going to give you better positive action. And that action is going to determine the results you get. When you start to have a win here or there, maybe it's just a little one first, maybe a little tiny win. It's going to go feedback in your beliefs that, hey, I got a little thing done. And you can start to break it down bite by bite, piece by piece. Okay, guys? So, you know, we went back here and we took a good look at ourselves. And, you know, we, you know maybe, maybe it was painful for some. And that's okay. You know, we said we were going to grow here and we're going to stretch. But the bottom line is this, guys. In order to get better and move forward, you have to know what the problem is. And here it is, guys. Self-awareness is a key to self-mastery. And, you know, we're going to get on the path to self-mastery today, and it starts with, you know, setting our vision for the next year and what we want to achieve. All right, guys. So excited to uh, jump into part two here where we are going to audit last year. We're going to do an audit of 2018. And if we, if we really truly want to improve our future, you know, we really have to audit our past results. You know, like the old, you know, there's an old saying out there that says, you know, history tends to repeat itself. And uh, Robin S. Sharma said, don't live the same year 75 times and call it a life. You know, one of the greatest pieces of advice I received early on in my business career was, uh, was to sit down on a regular basis, you know, reflect on who I was becoming, what I was doing, you know, the plan I had in place, and to make small adjustments along the way to get me back on course. Um, you know, I call it kind of like a check from the neck up, you know, most often, you know, other organizations call this an audit, you know, just like the good old IRS, you know, audits us taxpayers with suspicious filings, you know, we should audit our own accounts to make sure everything is up to par, right, with our banks, but we shouldn't just audit our bank accounts, you know, why not take an audit of our emotional accounts, you know, our lifestyle accounts, our, our spiritual accounts, and our relationship accounts, right? You know, how can things get better if we don't first take a moment to become more aware of what's happening? Now, uh, one of my favorite quotes of all time is George Bernard Shaw says, you know, 2% of people think, 3% of people think they think, and 95% of people would rather die than think. You know, so many people overlook this step. Um, you know, and I recommend taking at least one day a month uh, going forward to, you know, take a look back and, you know, dedicated a couple minutes here or there to go back and audit, you know, what you've been doing the last couple of days and going back and taking stock and where you're at. So 
Um, we're going to go through here uh, step by step and audit our 2018. You know, so what were what goals did you have for the last year? You know, maybe uh, you were looking to you know lose a couple extra pounds. You know, maybe you were looking to um, you know eliminate some debt. Uh, you know, maybe you were looking to run a marathon or a half marathon or a 5K. You know, maybe you were looking to, you know, read, read read the Bible in a year. I know there are a lot of programs out there that have that. Maybe you were looking to, you know, pay off, you know, a, a measurable amount of student loans or knock off some debt. You know, maybe you were, you know, looking to save an extra thousand dollars. Or maybe you were looking to, you know, get a promotion in your, in your job or rank advance in the company to a certain rank. Maybe it was to drink more water or eat less sugar or no sugar at all. You know, what were you, what were you focused on completing last year? All right. Um, next up, you know, so those were your goals you had written down. You know, you, you obviously know if you achieved them or not. Um, so you, now you have that taken stock. Well, let's, let's look at a more positive light. You know, what did you succeed in? You know, maybe you did run that marathon. You know, maybe you did, you know, uh, you know, maybe you did read the Bible in a year. Maybe you did knock off a bunch of debt. Maybe you became debt free. You know, it's important that we do, uh, you know, take stock of what we actually did succeed in. You know, maybe you did lose the five pounds you're looking to lose. Maybe you were, you know, looking to, you know, walk a mile a day. Now, of those things you did accomplish, you know, what, which one of those made you the most proud? You know, take a minute or two to think about the things, you, you know, you did accomplish or what you did succeed in and, you know, circle a few or put a star on it, however you want to mark it. You know, what made you most proud to, com to competing, to completing? All right, next we're gonna look at a couple other things. You know, of those goals you had, you know, where, you know, where did you come up short? I know it's sometimes painful. I have several goals that I fell very short of last year. And it's okay. Again, you can uh, mark these down, you know, by circling them, uh, you know, maybe doing a thumbs down by the ones you came up short of. And it's okay. You know, we're taking stock in the things that we're gonna see, uh, you know, what is most important to us as we go through these exercises. Okay, you have those. Now, um, what are some of your biggest regrets or disappointments from 2018? I know one of my biggest regrets was not going back and editing this slide properly or thoroughly enough because it says from 2017. So I can now add that to my list of regrets from 2018. <laughs> now as you're, as you're going through and looking at the goals you had, um, you know, the goals you succeeded in, you know, some of the areas you fell short or came up short, you know, some of the things that disappointed you the most or that you didn't complete, um, you know, as we go through here and you start to see these, can you notice any, um, you know, consistent themes or patterns that keep reoccurring in your life that may be tied to um, some of these other, you know, places where we may have fallen short, right? You know, maybe it's, you know, maybe you were trying to lose weight, but you know, oh man, you realize like every every other day, you you know, your diet crashes or you, you fall off the wagon or on the wagon, whichever it is with uh, with eating properly or not eating properly or not working out because, you know, for whatever reason, you have to stay up too late and it, you know, maybe the next morning you don't get to wake up 30 minutes early so you can get your workout in, you know. What are the consistent themes that pop up? You know, a common theme in network marketing, people, you know, tend to say, oh, well, life came up and life got in the way. You know, what, what are some of the things that you can identify? Um, maybe it's a habit or maybe it's a behavior that you can identify that kind of goes hand in hand with, 
you know, some of those goals we missed or fell short of, um, maybe some of those disappointments. You know, is there a habit that you do and can identify that goes hand in hand with those areas you might have fallen short or, you know, might have uh, not, not, not succeeded in the goals from last year? Maybe one of the habits is, you know, you don't ha still have your goals from last year written down. <clears throat> so give another minute or two. We're going to think about, you know, some of the themes, patterns that keep reoccurring in your life, you know, that, uh, that might go hand in hand with some of the other goals um, that maybe you fell short of. And at the same time, you know, think about the goals you, you, you did achieve or came very close to achieving, you know, also identify patterns, uh, behaviors, consistent themes that go hand in hand with the positive right. ones as well. Okay, we'll take one more minute to think about that. And then we're gonna go on to our, to our next piece. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to, you know, think of one or two habits or themes or patterns that keep reoccurring that are tied to, you know, those goals, whether you hit them or not. Next up, I want to ask you, you know, to write down yourself, you know, what, what do you value the most? You know, what are the top priorities in your life? Okay, um, you know, this is something that I think we need to ask ourselves very often. And, you know, I think, unfortunately, we probably only sometimes only ask ourselves, you know, maybe when we're doing a course like this, but it's important to have these written down so we can come back and revisit them each day. And trust me, this is all going to tie back in together. You know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe your faith is the most important thing to you. Um, health, you know, your, your good health. Um, maybe it's, you know, your relationships with your family. Um, you know, maybe it is, maybe you do value your career very highly. Maybe it's, you know, uh, having a clean house. Like that is your top, one of your highest priorities is having a clean house. You know, try to pick three to five of your top, you know, top priorities and what you value the most. Maybe it's your children's education or your faith or your, you know, your fitness regimen. Okay. So I'll give you another minute to just jot down your, you know, your highest values and priorities here. Okay, next, um, I want you to, right below that, uh, write down, you know, think about it. What makes you feel the most alive and fulfilled, right? Maybe it is, you know, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're, maybe some people here get a runner's high, you know, maybe that gets them feeling alive and like fantastic. Um, maybe it's going out and, you know, telling someone about, you know, or sharing information with our products about people because you know that it can change their life. It can help them physically. Um, you, you know, so many countless people, you know, thousands of lives have been blessed, you know, through our, through just our organization here in Team Fearless, um, sharing this with, you know, people that we know, love and care about. I know for a fact that that makes me feel very fulfilled and very, you know, alive. Maybe it's doing a, uh, you know, sometimes maybe it's the things that uh, make us scared, you know, maybe it's the, um, maybe it's doing a Facebook live. Um, maybe it is, you know, when you are spending time with your family, laughing with your kids. Maybe it's when you are, you know, you're deep in prayer. Take another minute or two and try to identify some, some things, the things that make you feel the most alive and fulfilled. Now I want you to think about um, the next thing here. We're going to wrap this up and move on to the next part of our audit from 2018. Um, you know, as we finish up here, you know, the things that made you feel most alive and fulfilled in that last year. Okay, the, um, the next question I want to ask as we take, you know, take stock of our life and uh, take stock of the last year before we wrap up section two here is, you know, what's one thing 
you could take off your plate immediately. You know, that, that maybe isn't completely necessary to free up some more time because obviously we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Um, you know, but what is something you could do that, you know, really isn't adding any value to your life or anyone else's? You know, maybe it's something you could knock off immediately. Maybe it's something, um, you know, that you have to do at least for another month or another week. But something that, you know, you can, you can stop doing in order to free up more time in your life. You know, maybe it's, you know, watching, um, maybe it's watching an extra show a day. You know what I mean? 30 minutes a day right there. Um, you know, maybe it's, you know, I don't know, maybe it's um, how having someone or, you know, having your kids do chores so you're not the only person cleaning the house. What are some things that, you know, you could remove from your plate in the next week, month, or immediately that can free up more time in your life? So maybe it's the, the frivolous activities we have. I know we all have them. Maybe it's, you know, you know, I know we've all find ourselves probably in a, in a scroll hole, as they say on Facebook, you know, maybe it's limiting that time on social media. Obviously, most of us use social media to grow our business here in Team Fearless, but using social media more intentionally. All right, so hopefully you've had, you've been able to identify a couple things here. And just to review, we went back and we, you know, we did a full audit of 2018. You know, we looked at our goals from last year. You know, I, we took a look at what we, you know, what we succeeded in, what made us the most proud. Um, you know, we also took stock of, you know, where we came up short and, you know, what were some of our biggest disappointments around that. Um, and then more importantly, we were able to identify in this part um, some consistent, you know, themes or patterns or behaviors or habits that accompany those places we fell short, but also um, the habits that accompany those places we succeeded. You know, we identified, you know, our, our highest values and priorities, what's most important to us and what made us feel most alive in 2018. And very importantly, as we move forward in a later section, we're gonna identify, you know, daily action items and habits to help us, you know, daily um, to do in order to, you know, achieve more goals that we have. But what is one thing you can maybe remove off your plate to free up some time for those habits we'll identify later on. All right, so hopefully you've taken good notes. We're gonna wrap up part two here and uh, hop into part three. And I'm uh, excited to move forward, guys. All right, so excited, guys, to hop into part three where we're gonna get into uh, our dreams and uh, our really our dreams for 2019. And uh, to, to really, you know, set the tone here, I, I want to talk about a, a Dr. Gil, Gail Matthews. She's a psychology professor at uh, Dominican University in California. And she recently studied the art and science of goal setting. And she gathered 267 people together, you know, men and women from, you know, all over the world, you know, all walks of life. You know, we're talking entrepreneurs, educators, healthcare professionals, so like doctors, you know, PTs, you name it, chiropractors, artists, lawyers, and bankers, okay? She took these guys and gals and she divided the, the participants into groups, you know, according to who wrote down their goals and dreams and who didn't. And she discovered that, you know, those who wrote down their goals and dreams on a regular basis achieved those desires at a significantly higher level than those who didn't. In fact, according to the study, she found out that you become 42% more likely to achieve your goals and dreams simply by writing them down on a regular basis. Now, that means that the likelihood that you'll transform your desires into reality goes up even further if you share your written goals with a friend who believes in your ability to succeed. So writing your goals uh, works by, actually, it, it ignites both hemispheres of your brain. By thinking, even thinking of the goal, the right side of your brain is ignited based on the desire for the new goal or the new possibility. And by writing the goal down, the left side or the logic-based center is also turned on. And, you know, you send messages to your conscious in every cell in your body saying that, you know, I want this. So, you know, in this section, we're going to go through a very powerful exercise you know, for our goals in 2019, and I, I like to call it goal storming, and that's what we're going to get into, okay? 
But so we're going to break this down, our goals, when we, when we dream for, you know, 2019, we're going to break it down into a couple categories <clears throat> because, you know, we all have very dynamic lives and, you know, we, you know, no two people are the same. So we're going to break it down into four main categories here. The first is our physical and or health goals. The second set of goals we're going to work on is our relationship, you know, slash social slash leisure goals, okay? Our third category we're going to talk about are, is, is the financial, business, and career goals. And then the fourth category we're going to talk about is our, you know, growth and contribution to society goals, okay? <clears throat> so those are the four areas that we're going to focus on, and um, we're, we're going to narrow it down from here. So, you know... When we get into our physical and health goals, I want you to break out that pen and paper again because, you know, at the top of that paper, I want you to write physical slash health goals, okay? Now, these are probably, you know, the most uh, common goals when it comes to a new year and resolutions and whatnot, but, you know, I want you to think about things you'd like to accomplish physically, you know, things you'd like to accomplish in order to, you know, improve your health, Okay. Um, you know, and it looks different for everybody, right? You know, maybe you're looking to, you know, lose 10 pounds or, you know, run a marathon. Maybe you're looking to uh, lose 15 pounds. You know, I put these examples up here sort of as like a memory jogger, okay? <clears throat> so I'll take some long pauses here so you guys can, you know, hopefully some of the goals up here can help you sort of jog your memory into you know thinking about some of the things that you might want to achieve maybe you're looking to uh, maybe you're just looking to eat healthier you know maybe you're looking to cut sugar out of your diet or cut alcohol out of your diet maybe some of you out there are looking to uh you know run a mile every day or just be able to run a mile you know i mean the worst thing out there is comparitis so you don't want to compare yourself to other people um only compare yourself to yourself you know maybe you want to fit into your old dress i can't personally relate to that because i don't wear dresses but you know maybe i want to look better in a swimsuit you know this summer Maybe you have a very measurable goal of dropping, you know, 5% body fat. Maybe you're, you know, aspiring to be a super stud and complete an Ironman. Maybe on your physical this year, you're looking to get, you know, better counts on your, on your blood work. Maybe you're someone who hasn't been, you know, as physical as you'd like to be, and you're just looking to go out there and walk for, you know, a couple minutes every day. Maybe you're looking to walk, take a 10 minute walk every day. Maybe you're looking to just be able to, you know, improve your mobility a little bit. Maybe you're looking to, you know, rehabilitate an old injury. You know, I, mean, I know I've, you know, from playing football and lacrosse my whole life, my shoulders are messed up. And last year, my shoulder mobility was something I focused on very heavily. And we're looking to have, you know, somewhere between six and infinity. Uh, when it comes to goals for each category. So hopefully, you know, we take these couple of minutes and, you know, it's just a stream of consciousness. Anything that comes to your head, go ahead and write it down because we're going to revisit these in a few minutes. All right, we'll give a we'll give another minute or two, you know, if you're watching this live. Um, hopefully you've gotten at least, you know, six, somewhere between six and infinity goals written down for 2019 when it comes to your physical and health goals. Um, we're going to revisit these in a minute. But uh, if you need to and you're watching the recording, if you need to pause it for some more time, um, go ahead and do so. 
Um, if you are watching this live and it's not enough time, it's going to be posted in Team Fearless immediately after this. So if you need to go back and work through these exercises again, you know, just for some more time to make sure you're able to complete it, you know, go ahead and watch the recording, and then you can pause it uh, if you need to if you need more time to write down some more goals. All right, a couple more seconds here and we'll move on to our next category of goals. So these are your physical and health goals for 2019 and hopefully at this point you have somewhere between six and infinity. I'm sure, I'm sure you all do. So again, if you need to pause it, you can go ahead and pause it if you're watching the recording. But uh, for the live viewers, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next category of our goals and that is our relationship, social, and leisure goals. Okay. So these are our relationship, social, and leisure goals for the year 2019. <clears throat> and again, you know, this could probably run as a full spectrum. You know, we have a very wide variety of folks here on our team. And, uh, you know, no two people are the same. So I'm sure there are tons of relationship, social, and leisure goals out there for the coming year. Maybe you're looking to uh, join a Bible study. Or, uh, you know, spend more time with your family. You know, and again, we're looking for anywhere from six to infinity, minimum of six, and uh, no maximum amount of things you want to write down right now. You know, in between, or maybe the top of the new sheet of paper, write down relationships, social, leisure goals, and uh, you know, just let the let the mind flow to the pen, and start writing down anything that comes to mind. Because again, we're going to revisit these to uh, help nail them down and narrow our focus as we go on in the next section. You know, maybe you're uh, maybe you're a lady and you like to just go get your nails done. You know, maybe once a month or once a week. I love to golf. Um, it's something I wish I could do more. And you know, maybe maybe your goal is to play golf once a month or once a week. You know, depending on where you live. Not all of us not all of us can play year round. Maybe your dream is to you know travel to Europe, or you know attend a high school reunion. Maybe you're looking to, uh, you know, join a book club or any type of club or join a league where you can, you know, play, play a sport and be surrounded by other positive people. Maybe a relationship goal could be to, you know, maybe you don't want any cell phones at the dinner table anymore or you want to be able to, you know, take your spouse out, you know, once a uh, or, you know, once a month on a date. And again, all these ideas are up here not to tell you what your dreams should be. These are just ideas out there to, you know, get the juices flowing in your brain so you can start thinking about, you know, other different uh, types of ideas here. And again, we're looking for, you know, somewhere between six and infinity goals uh, when it comes to our relationships or social slash leisure um, when it comes to 2019 for this coming year. You know, maybe you're, uh, you know, make, maybe you're looking to take your family out more often or, you know, take your kids to Disneyland or Disney World. Or maybe it's as simple as, you know, catching up with some old friends. You know, I know we all probably have relationships out there that, um, you know, it, it, would, it would be a great thing to rekindle you know, maybe just to reach out and see how an old friend from growing up or high school or college is doing. Again, we'll give this another uh, 30 seconds or so. Um, again, if you're watching the recording, please feel free to pause it if you need more time. Um, and again, if you're watching it live, a recording will be posted in Team Fearless for you all to uh, be able to pause it if you need to go back in order to complete this, this part of the course. But again, we're looking for anywhere between six and infinity goals when it comes to our relationships and social slash leisure. All right. So hopefully this memory jogger has helped um, you in coming up with several goals for uh, this category. We're going to move on to our next category of goals for 2019, which is our you know financial slash business or career goals, if you will. <clears throat> so... Again, you know, at the top of a new category on your piece of paper, write down, you know, financial slash business slash career. You know, 
all here in Team Fearless. We are all independent distributors of Life Vantage. Maybe there's a rank uh, you'd like to hit in 2019. Okay. You know, maybe there is, um, you know, a lot of us have, you know, other jobs that we do, other careers that we do in addition to Life Vantage. So, you know, maybe there's another professional goal that you'd like to hit, you know, within your career field. Maybe you're looking to, um, you know, generate a level of income through your side business in Life Vantage or your main business. And, you know, maybe you're looking to knock down debt. And again, you know, we're looking for somewhere between six and infinity here, guys. Maybe you're looking to, uh, you know, just to be able to make enough income, extra income to, you know, pay for someone to clean the house. It's a nice luxury to have. Maybe you're looking to, uh, you know, get a promotion within your company, you know, get that nice raise. I know we have people from almost all ranks in our, in our, in our team fearless here. Maybe you're looking to, to hit that next rank advancement, right? I know we have a lot of folks who are, who are, you know, almost every month there's, you know, several people who are knocking on the door the next rank. Maybe you have a set amount of money you'd like to save for your family, um, you know, in addition to, you know, your, your everyday lifestyle. Some money you want to put away, maybe for an emergency fund or a rainy day fund or a vacation fund. Again, maybe you're maybe you're like you know most of Americans who are looking to hammer down debt or student loans. And again, these ideas up here for you know financial, business, and career goals, you know, are not to tell you what your goals should be. These are memory joggers to help you know again get the juices flowing so you can start thinking about things that that really you know you know set your soul on fire and you know make make yourself want to achieve. So again, we're looking for anywhere from, you know, six to, you know, no limit uh, goals here because we're going to come back and revisit them to narrow it down. So we'll give a couple more minutes, uh, maybe another minute or so. And again, if you're watching the recording, be sure to pause it if you need more time. And again, if you're watching it live, you can always watch the recording to pause it to make sure you have enough time to complete this portion, this uh, section of the, of the course. All right, so getting ready here again. Hopefully, we're somewhere between six and infinity. I'm sure you, I'm sure you know everyone here is very motivated and excited. So I'm sure you guys have you know plenty of goals for your financial, you know your finances, your business and career goals for 2019. So we'll move on to our next category, uh, which is the growth and contribution goals. Okay, so. Here, um, you know, maybe you're looking uh, for ways to contribute to society, okay? Um, maybe you're looking to uh, become a better spouse, you know? Uh, maybe that means reading uh, a few books on, you know, becoming selfless, right? I know a big, uh, you know, for Samantha and I is, you know, we're, we're doing this year, we're doing Bible in a year. So, you know, over the course of a year, um, it's a guided program that's going to walk you through um, both the Old and New Testament with reflections each day. And at the end of the year, you'll end up reading the entire Bible with reflections along the way. So that's very cool, you know, to, to build our faith. Maybe a goal for you is to, you know, read a, a, a new book each month. We all know the power and importance of, of uh, personal growth. Um, and, you know, maybe your goal is to grow more in that realm, you know. Maybe that means reading a book a month or two books a month or whatever is, uh, you know, makes sense for you. Maybe your way to, you know, contribute to society or community is to, you know, join a service project or, you know, visit the elderly, right? Maybe you're looking to become, you know, a better brother, you know, a better sister or a better son or daughter. I mean, you name it. You know, there are countless uh, books out there and mentors you can reach out to in order to learn how to do that. Maybe you are looking to join an accountability group. Or shoot, maybe you are looking to start an accountability group, you know, to help with your own growth and then help others grow in order to help contribute to society.
you know, may, maybe a goal for you would be to, you know, donate, you know, a, one Saturday a month or one Saturday a quarter, you know, in order to give back to your community. You know, and again, all these ideas out here are simply there to, you know, get the juices flowing, jog your memory, not to tell you what your goal should be, but to start thinking about different ways that, you know, you can grow yourself personally and, you know, contribute to society and your community. So hopefully you have, again, somewhere between six and infinity of these. And, uh, you know, we're going to go back and revisit these and narrow it down in a bit. But for right now, um, if you're watching the recording, you can pause it if you need more time. If not, we're going to push forward here to uh, the next step in part three. And uh, super excited, guys. So, again, somewhere between six and infinity for uh, growth and contribution goals. And uh, hopefully you have written these down. Okay, so moving on. The next step we're gonna take, you know, we have we now have, you know, four different categories, you know, somewhere between 24 and infinity goals, if we have, you know, six goals for each category. Now we're gonna take them and we're gonna laser focus them, okay? So I want you to, you know, go back to your notes to that first section, okay, in uh for your physical and health goals. Hopefully, you again, you have somewhere between six and infinity. And we're going to go down and write down your top three goals for this category, okay? So we're going to, you know, whatever these goals may be, take a look at that list of goals you have for your physical and health goals. And I want you to circle, star, whatever you have to do to break out the top three goals that have to do with your, you know, either physical or health and I want you to circle them. Now, these are the goals that set your soul on fire, okay? These are the goals that, you know, if you accomplish nothing else in 2019, if you accomplish just these three things or one of these three things, you would stand proud at the end of the year to say, yes, I completed that goal. Pick your top three goals when it comes down to your physical and health goals for 2019. So take another minute or so. Again, if you're watching the recording, feel free to pause it. I know I sound like a broken record, but if you if you need to pause it for more time in the recording, please go ahead and do so. Otherwise, we're going to move on to our next category. We're going to do the same thing for our relationship, social, and leisure goals. I want you to look at the goals you've written down. I want you to think long and hard about it. And I want you to think about, you know, which one of these goals, which one of these three ideally that you can circle that, you know, again, if you accomplished nothing else in 2019, if you accomplished, you know, one of these three goals, you would be able to stand in 2020, look back on 2019 and say, I am so proud of myself for knocking out that goal. You know, these are the goals that set your soul on fire. <clears throat> so take a look back at that list and again if you need to pause it to you know to to break them out that's totally fine but we're going to move on for right now so if you're watching the recording you can pause it but uh for the live viewers we're going to move on to our next category hopefully you've been able to pick out three out of your relationship social leisure goals that you know set your soul on fire and uh, are very worthy and goals that would make you proud to complete in 2019. <clears throat> All right, so you guessed it. We're gonna do the same exact thing for our financial, business, and career goals. You know, of that list of somewhere between six and infinity, we're gonna take the top three goals that you know have to do with your finances, your career, your business, and I want you to circle the top three. The top three goals that again, if you did nothing else in 2019, at the end of the year, if you achieved one of these, you would be proud, so proud of yourself, so proud of yourself for achieving at the end of the year. So go to that list that you uh, recorded with your pen or pencil on paper and circle, star, whatever you have to do, those top three goals that you have for your finances, your business, and your career in 2019. <clears throat> and 
And again, uh, I'm sure I'm going to sound like a broken record. If you need to stop the recording or pause it, go ahead and do so. But otherwise, we're going to go ahead and we're, we're going to move on. And I'm sure you guessed it. Our last category is growth and contribution. So again, we're going to go through our growth and contribution goals. And, you know, of the of the goals you have written down in that category, I want you to go back and again, think about the goals that if you accomplish them and achieve them at the end of the year, the three goals that set your soul on fire that you would be so proud to have completed at the end of the year that when you look back, if you accomplished nothing else, if you did one of those three, you would be so proud and so proud of yourself for, for achieving. All right. So, you know, we're going to, again, again, a broken record. But if you are watching the recording, please feel free to pause it if you need more time. But for the live viewers, we're going to go ahead and uh, move on. So <clears throat> at this point, you should have 12 goals, you know, that you've circled. OK, so the top three of each of the four categories. All right. You know, so review them. OK, um, we're going to take a look at them. Do they absolutely set your soul on fire? Okay, so you know we have our four categories here: our health slash physical, our relationship slash social slash leisure, our financial slash business slash career, and then our growth slash contribution goal goals. Um, I want you to look at the the top three from each category, so a total of twelve, and I want you to look at them, think about them long and hard. And, you know, do they set your soul on fire? Will you jump out of bed every day to go chase them? Are these the goals, each, all, all 12 of them, these dozen goals from three from each category, are they goals that you will, you know, if you accomplish nothing else, if you accomplish just one of them, you would be proud to stand at the end of 2019, look back and say, I accomplished them. If not, I recommend that you pause it, do a little more soul searching and think a little longer and harder about it and, um, you know, dig a little deeper to figure out, you know, what you truly want to accomplish in 2019. But for the sake of this exercise right now, we're going to move on to the next phase. So you should have 12 goals right now in those four different categories that absolutely set your soul on fire and that you would be proud of achieving looking back at the end of 2019. And then we're going to uh, jump into our next phase here, guys. All right. Oh my goodness, guys. I'm so excited now because this is my favorite um, piece of my favorite part of this exercise when we get into our vision cast. Um, now, it's a very powerful exercise. That I'll walk you through. But, you know, before we get into it, um, you know, do you realize that, you know, it's probably probably even more than this, but, you know, 95% of the population, give or take, you know, they live by the by default. You know, people wake up, you know, people pay their bills, they zone out, they go to their job, you know, they rarely grow, you know, they are truly the exact opposite of intentional when it comes to the way they live their life. And, you know, it's not that they're bad people or anything. Most people just simply are not living intentionally and doing things with a purpose. Um, you know, really only 5% or maybe even less of the of the world is truly intentional, you know, in, in that they know where they're going you know, they know who's going with them, they know who's coming along, and they have some idea on how they're going to get there. And part of designing, you know, your life for yourself is getting absolutely crystal clear about your vision cast. And what I mean by that is where you're going in your life. And, you know, a vision cast is, it's an exercise, it's a classic exercise, um, writing you the idealized vision for your life you know, encapsulated with great detail from, you know, the moment you wake up, you know, to what you eat for breakfast, all the way through, step by step, what you do hour by hour in that ideal life of yours. And it might sound cheesy. I probably thought it, I, I, I did think it sounded cheesy when I first heard about this several years ago. But then I realized when I took it seriously, you know, I started to begin to make more and more conscious decisions about how I spent my time and what I focused on because I realized that, you know, I did have a vision for what I wanted. I just simply never, you know, focused on it long and hard enough to, to make it a reality. And, you know, here, you know, the beginning of 2019, I thank God that I did take it seriously several years ago because I wouldn't trade where, you know, I am with my family for the world. 
And, you know, I try to rewrite mine, you know, once per year, you know, right around this time, this year, um, usually the beginning of the year and where I want to be in five years. Okay. So that's what we're going to focus on. And I want to ask you to, you know, you can put down the paper. Um, this is going to be purely visual. Go ahead and write down, you know, whatever you want after we do go through this exercise. But I want you to envision where you want to be <clears throat> five years from today. Okay. Just think about that very, very, very deeply. Where do you want to be in five years from today? Now I want you to, you know, pick up that pen or pencil, whichever you have, grab a fresh sheet of paper, write vision cast at the top, and write that question down. Where I want to be in five years. Now, I want you to start writing your perfect day, you know, your ideal day, you know, your end goals, your vision cast, you know, what will that look like? Okay, now I'm going to walk you through some questions, but feel free to tune me out, my annoying voice out if you want to, and just let the pen flow. But, you know, you, you should, you know, be able to really envision where you want, and hopefully by the end of this, you have pages and pages of detail on, you know, where you want to be by the time we're done with this. Um, you know, definitely get loose, you know, be vivid, be very detail oriented in where you want to be because, you know, you can't really get anywhere or have anything unless you visualize it first. You know, an idea, you know, a thing must be an idea first, right? So I'm going to start going through here, guys. You know, again, feel free to tune me out. Some of you probably already know exactly where you want to be in five years, the house you want to be in, the town you want to be in, you know, the activities you're doing every day. But just in case you don't, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll ask you some questions with some pictures along the way to help guide you through this exercise. So, you know, from the moment you wake up, you know, where, where do you wake up? Are you, are you in a house? Are you in a, in a bedroom? Is your, is, you know, if you're married, is your spouse next to you? You know, if you're not married, is the, the spouse you imagine for yourself in the future one day having lying next to you? Maybe, maybe your dog's laying next to you, you're at your feet. What does the room look like? What do the sheets feel like? Are you well rested? Did it smell nice? These are the details. Is your pillow super comfy? You know, when you look out your, your window, when you, when you wake up, you know, are you out there in the mountains? Are you, are you, are you looking out um, over a beautiful bay? Are you looking over the water? What part of the country are you in? What time of day is it? Are you sleeping in? Or are you waking up early before the sun rises? When you, when you walk downstairs, you know, what does your kitchen look like? <clears throat> are you grabbing a cup of coffee? Shaking up an Axio? You know, what, what do you, where, where are you? You know, what do you feel like? What are you wearing? You know, what do you do first? Are you, are you waking up and you gonna read a Bible? That you wake up, are you, you going to do some gratitude? Are you going to wake up and just be quiet in your own thoughts for a little while before you get up? Maybe you're going to wake up and uh, crush a workout. Maybe you're going to go to the gym, do a, do, a, do a lift, you know, get a CrossFit workout in. What do you, what do you like to do in the morning? What gets you going? You're going to wake up, you're going to go, go on a walk, you're going to go on a run. This is your ideal day. What's for breakfast? You gonna have breakfast tacos, personal favorite. You gonna go with uh, the healthy bowl up in the top right, which you probably should. You gonna have a high stack of pancakes or French toast. You know, what are you eating for breakfast? Who are you with? Who's around you? Maybe, maybe, maybe you don't want a ton of people around you. Maybe you enjoy, um, you know, you know, being, you know, the the. The, the silence of being alone. Maybe you, you, you envision for yourself in your ideal life that five years from now you have a large family around you. What are you, what are you doing with your morning? Again, this is, this is your, this is your life. You know, are you imagine yourself going, going to pray, going to church? Are you imagine yourself, you know, playing golf? What are you doing with your day? This is your ideal, idolized life, day in your life, five years from now. 
Are you playing golf on a beautiful golf course? Are, are, you, are you sitting on the beach with a bunch of friends, relaxing, enjoying your time and the beautiful views? Are you up in the mountains? Maybe you're, maybe you're hanging out reading a book. What's for lunch? You having a nice burrito bowl from Chipotle in the bottom right? Maybe a nice salad, having a shake. What are you eating? And I know this sounds all outrageously detailed for what you'll be in five years, but again, part of this is to get you thinking about bigger than where you are, you know, bigger and further from where you are right now. What are you doing in your ideal life? Your afternoon, what, what are you out there doing? Are you, are you helping give back to your community? Again, this is your ideal life. Maybe you're, you know, hanging out, going out on the boat, depending on where you live. Maybe you're going out with friends, maybe you're going out with family. Maybe you're just enjoying the peace and quiet of being alone on a hammock reading a book. That sounds fantastic. Again, these are your personal dreams of your perfect ideal day. Maybe you're like me and you're playing golf again in the afternoon. When it comes down to it, what's for dinner? You know, again, this might seem like outrageous in detail, but you need to imagine this before any of this can be, ever become real. What are you eating for dinner? What's your evening like, okay? Are you going out to a movie? Going out to the clubs? Maybe you're going out to a sports bar to watch a football game? Maybe you're sitting outside by a bonfire with some friends? Maybe you're going for a nice run at nighttime. I love doing that. Are you surrounded? Maybe you're surrounded by your kids. You know, maybe you're reading to your kids before they go to bed with your spouse. <clears throat> And maybe you're going out and getting crazy. It's your life. This is this is your ideal day. Maybe five years from now, you're sitting out enjoying your beautiful backyard with your beautiful pool, beautiful fire pit, just enjoying the beauty. Maybe you're curled up with a book, okay? You know, in front of a fire with socks on your feet, some tea and a nice book. Again, you know, you know what are what are you doing with your evening? And when you lie your head down at night, what are the thoughts going through your head? Are you saying maybe, maybe some gratitude? Are you reading a book? Are you kissing your spouse, loved one? When you close your eyes at the end of the day, do you, what, what do you feel? Do you feel a sense of gratitude for living a full life and a full day full of meaning? Again, this is five years from now in your ideal day. So your eyes close, your ideal day is complete. I hope you have plenty of things to write down about your ideal day. And with that being said, guys, that's gonna wrap up our vision cast. And then we're gonna get into part four, how we're gonna achieve the goals that we've set down and how we are going to put a plan into action to put a plan of habits to affect a, a, a daily action items that we can do each and every day to achieve these goals and become real. So I'm so excited to move on to the next section, part four, where we wrap it all up and put it all together. All right, everyone. Uh, we're going to kick off our fourth and final section here. And I love it. It's because um, we, this is where we take all these ideas and, you know, goals um, and we, we put together a no kidding plan on how to accomplish them, okay? And, you know, it's it's pretty clear, you know, a goal without a plan is nothing more than a wish. And after doing this for years, you know, I, I believe that a majority of people who set goals make three massive mistakes. Number one, you know, they don't write them down. Um, you already cleared that. We've already, we've already written down a bunch of goals today. Um, number two, they don't create a digestible plan on how to go after their goals. And then number three, they don't track their results and audit them on a regular basis. So, you know, although although we could send you off and say, you know, just do it, you know, you have your goals now, make it happen. 
Uh, I think what Nike doesn't understand is that most of our fear um, in doing all this and accomplishing great things in our life comes from not breaking it down into simple tasks. And one of my favorite quotes of all time is, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You know, one bite at a time. Okay, how do you run a marathon? You know, you run it, you know, one step at a time. How do you live a life? Um, you know, one decision, one moment at a time. Okay, so that is how we're going to break this down, guys. Okay, now, you know, just for example, if you had to lose 25 pounds this year, you know, maybe some of the habits or action steps you could take, um, you know, to get on track would be, you know, laying out your workout clothes on top of the dress the night before, you know, hiring a personal trainer, you know, buying new running shoes. Maybe you invest in a meal prep service or, you know, schedule a time at some point during the week to research, you know, new healthy meal prep ideas. Uh, maybe you download an app to remind you to drink water or to log your runs. Now, breaking these goals into manageable steps is going to allow you to put one foot in front of the other in this marathon of 2019 in life. And uh, it's going to get some forward momentum and it's going to get you close to those, you know, whatever that goal may be for you. OK, now. You don't have to see the end from the beginning. You just have to see the next step, okay? Any goal is manageable one action at a time. And that's why I love this quote of how, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? The same way you run a marathon. Uh, you know, you run it one step at a time. So we've created some um, uh, some uh, tools to help you with this. And um, this goal achieving habit worksheet um, is Post it here in Team Fearless for you to for you to print out uh, ahead of time so you have it. Um, if you're watching the recording, make sure you pause it and you know have this with you. Uh, maybe you want to print out a copy, or maybe you um, you know maybe you want to use the tablet or something to fill it out. Whatever works for you, okay. But this is what we're gonna do. Uh, this is how we're gonna put these, take these goals and turn them into habits that we can do every single day to achieve those goals. So. You know, we'll, so we're going to move on to our first set of goals, which was the physical or health goals, okay? So I want you to go back to revisit your physical and health goals, okay? Um, you know, so maybe it was to, you know, go to those top three that we circled. Maybe the, the number one goal you have was to lose 10 pounds for your physical or health goals, okay? That's one of the three goals that you would be, you know, more proud of anything at the end of the year, uh, had if you could just accomplish that one goal. Now, what we're going to do is break that goal down into habits, okay? So I want you to think of two habits that will help you achieve the, for that goal in, you know, so if it's to lose 10 pounds, maybe one habit would do be to, you know, run 20 minutes a day or do 20 minutes of cardio a day. That's one habit that you can do daily, a habit that you can do daily to achieve that goal. Maybe another uh, habit in order to help you achieve that goal is to, you know, drink a gallon of water a day, okay? Those are two habits that you can track every single day and you can hold yourself accountable. Those are two habits that will help you achieve that goal of losing 10 pounds. So, you know, this this action we just took, creating two daily, you know, measurable habits in order to help you achieve that goal, um, I want you to do this for each of your three physical or health goals, okay? Now, when you see that, now for this category, you, you have three goals for each category, you're going to have six habits that you can do for each single category of goals. Um, you know, two habits per goal that are going to help you achieve that. Now going over to your relationship or social leisure goals, go look back at those top three goals you had, the top three you circled, the ones that set your soul on fire, okay? Maybe your uh, maybe your your the the goal was to have a you know family Bible study each week. Well, let's think of some habits that we can do, you know, measurable daily or weekly to help you achieve that. Uh, maybe one hour study on Sunday as a family, okay? Maybe you maybe it's as as much as you know reading a reading the Bible or a verse or reviewing what you heard at, ma at church or mass that that Sunday and discussing it with your family for an hour. Okay, what's another habit to help you achieve that? You can set out a plan on Saturday night. You can sit down and write the plan for what you're going to do for the Bible study the night before. Those are two measurable habits that you know clearly whether you did or you didn't, and you can track that will put you on the on the path to achieving that goal. 
Okay, so now I want you to revisit you know, the, the other goals you have for your relationship, social, or leisure and figure out two habits for each goal that will enable you and put you on the path that you can do either daily or weekly or whatever the metric is in achieving that goal. Next, we're going to do the same thing for our you know, financial, business, and career goals. Maybe your goal was to become debt free. Okay, well, you know, maybe what, what's one habit that we can start doing in order that will support us in achieving that goal? And, you know, for example, maybe it's making your own lunch, you know, maybe from leftovers the night before, bringing lunch to work instead of buying lunch out, you know, buying five or ten dollar lunches every day. Okay, that's one habit. Sure, make your own lunch. What's the other habit to support that? At the end of the week, you know, that money that you would have spent on lunch. Put that at the all that money you save at the end of the week uh, into your debt. Okay, so you know if you're spending you know typically five to ten dollars a week, that could be up to fifty bucks a week on uh, maybe even more on lunch. Okay, now that's fifty bucks a week. That turns into two hundred dollars a month that you can you know put towards your debt to help chip away. Those are two habits that can help you um, achieve that goal, and those are habits that you can track every single day. Now. You know, now I want you to go back to your other goals for this category and come up with two habits that you can take action on uh, daily or weekly or whatever the metric may be that will help support you in achieving that goal. <clears throat> Next, we're going to look at our growth or contribution goals. Okay, so you have three that you circled. We're going to go back and revisit them. You know, for example, maybe one of those goals was to, you know, read one book a month. Okay, well, what are two habits that can support you in achieving that goal? Well, read 15 minutes every day before you go to bed. That absolutely will help you achieve that goal in reading, you know, one book a month. What's another habit to support that? You know, creating a reading list. So, you know, you have an actual plan laid out of the books you want to read. You know, both of these two habits that you can do every single day are going to help you in achieving that goal. So now I want you to review the other goals you have for each category. You know, take some time if you're watching the recording, pause it and, you know, figure out what you need to do you know, or a habit that can help you achieve each one of those goals. So at the end of this, we should have, you know, for our three category or four categories, three goals per category and two habits for each supporting goal. You know, we should have... Um, we should have 24, 24 or so habits that we can do each and every day that's going to allow us to support uh, and achieve those goals. And the biggest part of this is accountability, guys. You know, we, we did an audit on the previous year, and, you know, having accountability is huge. And that's where we've created some of these tools to help us in achieving these goals. So, like I said, you know, for our four different categories of goals, we have three goals per category. Okay, so that's 12 goals and two habits to support each goal. So that equals 24 or so habits. So this next thing I want to show you is a tool we have created for you. And, you know, it is a habit tracker. And one of my favorite quotes by John C. Maxwell, who's spoken at a bunch of our events, uh, such a great idea is that to change your life, you need to change what you do every single day. You need to change what you do daily, okay? So this tracker here has spaces for all the goals that, um, that for all for, I'm sorry, for all the habits um, that will help support your goals and, and achieving your goals. So, you know, take this habit tracker. I encourage you to fill it out. You know, go back through these worksheets for each goal, come up with, you know, two habits that will support you in achieving those goals. Now that you have those habits written down, you can fill in this habit tracker right here, okay? Now you have this habit tracker. On the left-hand side are the, the habits that support you in achieving your goals. And on the top across are the days of the month. You can print out a habit tracker for every single month to help you hold yourself accountable and audit and go back and review, you know, where you where you fell a little short and where you did great. But this is allowed this this is a tool to help you accountable in achieving your goals, okay? So another part of this is, you know, in making this getting this done and taking action is deciding, you know, you know, when during the uh, when am I going to take 5 minutes to go back and review my habit tracker each day. So maybe it's right before you go to bed, you go down and review, you check off the things you did, okay? 
then you know establishing a time at the end of the week where you go in and say you know what did I do at the end of the week okay um, going back and evaluating each day and then you know come up with some metrics to reward yourself guys you know come up with some ideas to reward yourself for taking action you know each day each week each month maybe uh, you know come up with some creative ideas maybe work with your spouse to come up with some you know rewards for completing these now another worksheet that's created for you guys is this monthly goal audit um, it has the month uh, for, for when you did it and then the next time you're going to review again and it has your you know your top three goals whether or not you achieve them or not and then a little note uh, area at the bottom to say okay well these are the habits I was able to continue doing to support the uh, to support that goal these are the habits you need to work harder on and it helps them keep them at the forefront of your mind so you can keep working on achieving these goals. You know, these tools are created to help you hold yourself accountable. And, you know, we have a great community here at Team Fearless. We can help uh, hold each other accountable as we go through this. So to wrap up, guys, you know, I I'm so excited. We, we knocked out another year of this uh, goal-setting mastery course. I know it had a huge impact on a lot of folks last year. And, um, you know, you are now part of the 5% of the population that is intentional about, the gr about their growth. You know, you set your goals out. You did your vision cast. You know, you now know where you're going. You have a clear vision of where you're going. And you know who's going with you because you've imagined exactly the perfect day of your life five years from now from where you want to be. And because we, you know, worked through these worksheets, <clears throat> developed our developed our top three goals for each category, and then we came back and, you know, created habits that we can do every single day that support us in achieving those goals. Now you know how you're going to get there, okay? So, you know, when this training is over in a minute or so, you know, you're, you're not on your own. You still have all the support of Team Fearless, and you have all the tools in your toolbox, okay? You have our goal-achieving, you know, habit worksheet, so your top three goals for each category, and then the two habits for each one of those goals that helps you achieve them. You have your, you know, your habit tracker, you know, so you can track every single day what you're doing and not doing and hold yourself accountable at the end of the month. And then you have your monthly audit tool where you will, at the forefront of your mind each month, go back, review your top three goals from each category, and make notes on the progress, whether or not you've achieved that goal or not. And then in, in, in the notes section for progress, you can note the habits that you're able to do, habits that you need to work on. So you have all the tools in your toolbox now. Uh, you have your goals set, and you have actionable steps that you can take every single day this year to help you achieve your goals. And I know that it's going to be a great 2019 as we all grow together here in Team Fearless. Uh, I love you all. I thank you for being part of this and um, let's make it a great year in 2019. Take care and God bless.